Hello everyone, I'm Rahul Khatri and I'm an Android app developer. So my topic is the future of mobile app development. So I have categorized my this uh, presentation into two, two parts. First is the category of mobile app development. Second is what are the emerging trends towards the mobile app development. So not talking towards the mobile app development. So it is basically there are four major categories of mobile app development. So it's like you know, there are four types of apps like native app, uh, hybrid apps, uh, Web apps and progressive apps, PWBs. So, what is uh, I just going to you know, tell you about just a uh, brief description about all the four, and uh, then we'll discuss about them. So, first of all, native apps. Basically, natives are built for a particular platform, and a particular platform like, for example, for an Android or for an iOS or a Windows, any of the platforms. So, they are basically for a single platform. So, their advantages are they are Basically, for just as for a single platform, so they have totally dedicated to their platforms. They can easily use its uh, native components. They they perform outstanding performance on that particular device because they are dedicated to that particular device. So, as they can easily access their native components, uh, native components like the camera or location or any other any of the component like storage anything. So they can easily access those components, and due to that, they have excellent performance. And but they have some dis disadvantages uh, with that too because they are only dedicated to a particular platform. So they will they will be more expensive and they will consume more time in developing for that because for that a single platform. So for example, if a company is developing an app targeting a single platform, it will take a lot of time and then it it try to switch to another platform. So it will take it will ha it has to start from zero for that particular platform. So this is something which is not good with native app development. So other things are it's uh, whenever you need to push an update or something to modify in that particular app, you have to put that app to a, any of the play, uh, play store or any of that respective app stores uh, for that update. So and uh, uh, why I'm talking about this native app and hybrid apps because now uh, developers and companies are moving towards hybrid apps. Uh, slowly, slowly they are moving to us because hybrid apps have the biggest advantages. They are uh, they can perform uh, a single app or with single and uh, code base. They can perform with that single plan, uh, that code base. They can run on different platforms like for Android, iOS, or for a web. So just you have to build for just for a once initial build, and you can run on different platforms. So why they were not developing early or they were developing but very less in frequency so this is because they were not uh, the hybrid app apps were not rendering uh, the native components or you can say they were not able to much use those native components and not able to the present native fields for the, uh, that particular device so now currently and uh, the uh, native uh, native uh, native platforms like react native flutter they are they are present, they have such a features or these frameworks have such a tools or we can say they have, they have inbuilt features to render the native feel. For example, if I talk about Flutter, so they have a, for Flutter, if I talk about it's a Google based Flutter, uh, developed by Google. So Flutter have an, uh, it renders Android uh, native components using uh, material design and uh, for iOS it rendered through Cupertino library. So it uses it co uh, its code base and renders the native field uh, up, uh, to a, up to a certain limit. So other components like React Native, Ionic, and PhoneGap. So the the problem with uh, other platforms like uh, Ionic and PhoneGap is they are rendering native components but not, not that up to that limit. So in future or uh, after some years, we will able to uh, receive more native -like components in those hybrid uh, apps or hybrid platform also. So a few disadvantages uh, about uh, when, you know, hybrid app is they, are, they just present an, uh, an optimal performance. So if I compare to native apps, so their performance is not that optimal or not that good. Secondly, they have the limited features and I hope in the near future uh, they will overcome that and they are working towards that also. So native apps uh, uh, render, mostly native hybrid apps uh, render their performance through web apps, web, uh, sorry, web view. 
So the web view is basically, you can say, a browser inside an application. So the hybrid apps uses a browser inside the application uh, through their, uh, their native view. So they render through that. So secondly, now moving towards web apps and HANA PWA. So the basic difference would be between native apps and uh, those native apps, hybrid apps, or the web apps would be. So they, the basically web apps or PWAs, they just run their website inside the uh, you know, inside web view or just a, you know, that particular website. Just it's a customized website in such a way that you can view website in more we can say more you know, mobile friendly manner or user friendly manner in terms of mobile screens. So the web apps are developed through you know, basic technologies like you know, basic web technologies like HTML, CSS or other. So there uh, the basic advantage would be uh, what is they just need to develop once through their you know, web com, you know, the languages and you can easily uh, for it will run for other platforms also. So other advantage is you, you know, whenever there is an update, you need not to push to a Play Store, or Play Store or their you know, respective app stores for that particular update. So whenever you have to any new feature you have implemented, it will automatically be in your website as it's a website. So it not uh, it will not take that much time compared to those you know, native apps. But it has some disadvantage also. So you are not able to, you know, as it is a website, so, so there is no Play Store listing for that. So this is the basic disadvantage for that. So for overcome few of these uh, disadvantages, there is a uh, Google has developed the PWS Progressive Web App. So these uh, Progressive Web App is you know, the basic advantage is uh, it's uh, like it is extending you know, websites through their PWS. Uh, it looks like an app whenever you go through their website, they will automatically create a shortcut kind of, uh, it look like an app, which is a shortcut for uh, for you know, addressing their website. So whenever you want to go to that particular website, it looks just like an app. You have to click, uh, just as app start that particular, click on that, you are able to access their website. So PWS, one more feature is, if you have a limited internet also, so the PWA will work, because it loads the, uh, load the information and it will run up to a certain limit. But if you talk about websites or web apps, they will not do that. So this is the, bit, uh, the basic uh, advantage PW has. So now moving towards uh, uh, trending uh, technologies or say trending emerging technologies towards uh, mobile apps. So uh, these are. Uh, Emerging technologies are like four, like virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, AI, as is artificial intelligence, IOTs, and wearables. So why I'm talking about these technologies? Because when you talk about virtual reality, so most commonly virtual reality and augmented reality are linked with uh, gaming. So they are mostly linked with gaming. So I want to show one small video towards uh, to look how this which exactly virtual reality is. So what is virtual reality is basically about? Virtual reality is rendering virtual and a virtual world, like for example, if it's about a city, so that virtual city, and you can do that particular place with the help of uh, virtual reality. So why I'm talking about virtual reality is because uh, with the help of uh, virtual reality gear, so you have to just uh, have your mobile phone, uh, sing mo your mobile phone, which is, it can be an Android or iOS, any, you have to install a, just one app, like, if you are using a cardboard or any other HTC or HTC web or anything. So install their app and from that you can view the virtual reality content. So these are new technologies which are emerging towards the mobile applications and making it more and more, uh, you can say user friendly and more, you are enhancing the features about the mobile application. So talking about virtual reality, so this is just a simple sample of virtual reality. So this is just a, uh, you can say, just a virtual reality tour. So with the virtual reality, the basic advantage is you have 360 degree view also. So this is the 360 degree tour with the virtual reality component. So you can see it says 360 degree and this is a virtual world. So why uh, this is a, so why is this important? Because for example, if I want to go to a supermarket to buy something, but uh, I don't want to physically go to a supermarket just to relax, to make my mind relaxed. So what I have to do is one, take my mobile 
put on uh, that VR handset and then just uh, in that particular VR, I have to play that uh, through their VR content, like for example, through YouTube or uh, apps also for the VR content. So with Apple, just my single mobiles. So I am uh, physically in my home, but I am into inside a supermarket through so that virtual reality and augmented, augmented reality both. So, so more uh, talking more about virtual reality. So talking about more virtual reality, how it has been developed. So the virtual reality has been developed uh, with uh, different, different tools like uh, Unity, Unreal, Unity, Un Unity 3D, and Unreal are basic tools which uh, used to develop you now virtual reality content. And uh, they just uh, not render 2D components; they render 3D components also. You can design in it, and you can uh, actually take the component from other software also. And you can uh, just get that components to these also. So other tools are like, you know, I was talking about Google VR and Insta VR. So Google is providing a platform which is in you know, Google VR. So it has in, uh, uh, it has like, you know, TensorFlow and other uh, libraries are there. So just have just take that particular component or uh, template, uh, or you can create your own template also. So with it, have the help of that particular template or your own template, you can build that uh, VR. We are resource for users and you can develop and you can optimize that and use it. And secondly, what is augmented reality? So uh, the basic difference is augmented reality and virtual reality is virtual reality is totally virtual, a virtual world inside uh, that particular platform you're using and augmented reality is somewhere similar or you can say you are inside a real world, but you are using some virtual uh, elements uh, like for example, like this. So this is a uh, So this is a virtual, uh, just I talk about virtual reality gaming. So this is virtual reality gaming and in this, uh, the players are using and uh, they're having this, you know, their augmented reality gears. They're wearing it and just playing without, uh, like for example, if you want to have a, so if I want to have a play a cricket, so I will use a bat or a ball or any of the instruments. So any game, I need an instrument. For virtual reality, I just, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality both. So I need just have that gears, I have to wear them and uh, I can play with um, with my friends and uh, uh, those components. Like for example, if I want to like just this kind of a, what kind of game? Uh, it's a tournament. It's uh, so I have to just wear that gear and just play that game. So this is a tournament. Uh, it's uh, going to happen uh, next year in uh, Tokyo. So these are the new uh, gaming things which are happening and will happen in near future. So how we develop the virtual reality content? So uh, again, Google is having this uh, AR core library and uh, iOS is having uh, this uh, AR kit. So both have developed this uh, uh, AR core and AR kit. So these, uh, with help of these kits, you can develop uh, AR materials and you can render uh, those materials inside your respective Android or this iOS uh, device. So uh, these are new emerging trends uh, which are making more in our mobile development more and more interactive and more people are moving towards the these things because earlier these things was not that much possible you have to buy this uh, expensive kit uh, to have the virtual viewer or anything but now you, you know so recently from few years you have to just have a your mobile app switch to that in a particular device or whatever gear and you can do that uh, virtual uh, Whatever, whatever you want, you can play through that. So one more is the Spark AR tool, uh, Spark AR Studio, uh, with through you can develop those uh, AR contents, VR and AR contents. So now next is AI. So artificial intelligence or AI. So why this is related to smartphones or you can say their mobiles. So with the with those mobiles, uh, now we are using AI in our phones or you can say mobile phones. How so? Why are we using it? So, so one example is through virtual assistants. So there are different, different virtuals like so Google assistants is there, and uh, Siri is in iPhone, iOS. So these are virtual assistants, you know, all AIs inside our mobile. So, so these are a little earlier. So now AI is emerging and it's having uh, more advantages and it's actually growing. And with the help of mobiles, we can access AI with uh, quite easily, and it will enhance our life, uh, life and environments. So, the first is 
ELSA AI. So this is basically a, is a studio, is a, is a, like a company. It's, it's basically it's providing, uh, you can say it's English speaking or improving your conversation or your pronunciation to the English with the help of AI tool. So you have to interact with this AI and it will suggest you so how you pronounce that English uh, English words and you can improve your English. So that is this is one example. Secondly, uh, it's with the help of AI. So we can, we are able, uh, easily able to click better images. So as we all know, in our mobiles, we have uh, AI cameras, so AI powered camera. So it suggests us which photo you have to click, uh, we have to keep or which photo we have to delete. So this is just the hardware. So apps are also available, mobile apps like this, the roll app. The roll app will suggest you which photo you have to keep or which not. So this just uses AI in a, in a simple machine learning algorithms to render all these things. So other like facial recognition. So in our smartphones, we have this unlock technology. So with the help of AI, just scan our faces and they, we are able to unlock uh, the smartphone, any other features you want to go. So second is image recognition. So this is something which is really important because uh, with the help of these tools, uh, even the person with this uh, no, visual impairment, so if a person is not able to see or is blind. So with the help of these tools, uh, just like an uh, AI poly app or seeing AI. So these uh, apps or we can say AI apps, uh, they are powered with these tools, uh, machine learning algorithms. They just, you have to just uh, your, put to your cameras or just scan this object and it will tell what object is, for example, a phone or a stick, a table or a pen or marker, anything. So if a blind person is walking or is, is in home, he was searching for something. So he has to do, go to his, uh, mobile, open the app, scan things and you will be able to know uh, what objects is there. So it's helping uh, visual impairment people through AI. So let's talk about how to develop that. So AI, uh, there are a few tools like you know, ML kit and TensorFlow. So ML is like machine learning kit, which is having those machine learning algorithms. So you can develop your app or those features inside your, uh, your those kits and in, uh, this particular kit you can render in the you know, application or respective like with iOS or Android or any other platform. So with that, gen most generally these AI things are uh, currently they are limited to Android and iOS. So in near future they will extend themselves for different platforms also. So another thing is IoT. So if we're talking about IoT, so how is it related to mobiles? So whenever you talk about IoT, it looks like more like uh, smart homes or smart things, but how is it related to our mobile? So with the help of mobile, so earlier there was an app which is an uh, it's a HUE app, so Philips HUE app. So maybe many of you have heard about this HUE app. So this was uh, one of those IoT apps. So with the help of that particular app, you were able to just switch your like no, those lights or anything with with that particular frequency like LED lights with a different frequency like I would say different levels. So brightness levels like low, higher, different colors. So with that app, so that light technology is coming inside our app. So there's something which is related to IoT, which is enhancing our and uh, daily life. So other things are like you know, as I said, smart homes. So Google is having this uh, Nest project, NEST project. So how is smart homes helping with this app, with this our phones? So for example, if I'm entering to a room, so before entering that particular room or am I outside a room or outside that, uh, I would say a far away from a room also. So what I have to do is I have to open my app, switch to that particular, like for example, if I know there's a, so there's summer, so I know it will be a high temperature. So just have to just click into my app, automatically AC will be on, set to a particular temperature which is needed to me. Automatically before entering to my room or to my house, automatic temperature will be adjusted as uh, I want. So why, how is Nest is helping? So uh, with the help of this, uh, this uh, tool, so they will not only uh, able to set the temperatures and other things are also there. So how is like you know, not only for summers and winters also, uh, if I have a room heater or any other things. Uh, so adjusting temperature, mainly adjust temperature and different things also with the smart homes. Secondly, is, uh, retail chain supply. So how is this uh, related to smartphones? So so there's one initiative by you know, Amazon, Amazon Go, or you can say it's a platform for Amazon Go. So how they do is they are using app and other platforms. So with the help of that, they track their you know, their materials, like uh, their resource materials, like you know, whatever they have, stuff, grocery stuff or any other stuff they have. So just check what is you know, 
limited or which is consuming more and more which stock be needed or any other things like that they maintain the products uh, products quantity or what is short whatever the shortage is there so with the help of their mobiles they are able to list things which are necessary they are able to like check what consumer or you can say what group of consumers consuming which kind of things so other things like fitness band so how they are so basically whenever you are using a fitness band like maybe a fitbit or any other company's for now fitness band you have to use the app inside your phone maybe ios or android any of the device platform so you can track your uh, health like uh, how much calories are burned or any other things which you can track so with the help of your mobiles you are able to track your health how much you have you know, run or whatever your steps you have taken how much calories you have burned or any other, any other things with the help of your uh, app you can easily monitor that so secondly it's helping in uh, look in uh, just finding your uh, child's or a pet so whenever uh, you have a like for example I, uh, if i also have a pet in my home so i know by mistake my if i have open the gate or i have just uh, forgot to close the door so it is like it's nature so may, it may possible he may go outside or uh, he may lost somewhere or he may uh, like go somewhere and not able to come back so so that particular time i was not able to you know like i just try to find him but it's little dif- difficult to find him to so search every way so with the help of this the one app is called uh, just like p uh, pausa app this app is basically have sensors like you uh, know which is attached to that particular pet or a child so with the help of the sensors you can easily track you know to which location that pet is or uh, with the help of app so it uses a gps or a location tracking system Uh, so with this app you can easily can track so what is the location or the nearest location of your pet so you can go and find him back so there's something uh, there's something which is helping us and uh, so the uh, one of the last thing is wearable so how is wearable and you know, are connected to our app so as i talk about you know fitness bands like you know fitbit apple watch or other also there so they are connected to our apps so but what features they provide us so and what enhancements they are having with our phones uh, smartphones so first and uh, like you are able to text so if you are kind of connecting your wearables to your mobiles you are able to text uh, you are able to receive phone calls so like the though all those features you are having on phone like that sorry but not every feature limited features you have you can access through your wearable device with your smartphones or maybe in a for example apple watch is there so it is only for ios another uh come uh, other watches are also there htc watches there for android and other things also there so you are able to link your smartphones with those wearables and uh, you can uh, make use of all these things also like more use of your smartphone so secondly as i talk about you know text and phone calls comes under communication so others like health and wellness like you know, fitness tracking your uh, calories burn or the other, other things and secondly expenditure and wireless payment so with the help of wearables you can uh, not only can track your expenses and you can you uh, know make those simple payments also so how is this possible so one is amazon uh, sorry not amazon it's amaze fit so amaze fit this is a kind of fitness band like i say it's a wearable so with this wearable you can uh, uh, pay uh, small small bills or limited amount bills utility bills and uh, maybe at a restaurant anywhere you are going so with help just uh, you need not to open your app you are open for your phone it is connected to your smartphone and with your wearables uh, you can pay to that particular consumer to anywhere you are secondly the last thing is uh, the it is also helping like a key so for example i have a car so or a so i have a car here i it is not necessary i will uh, always carry a key some sometimes may forgot my key or every time if i have a key also i have to open uh, take my key in my pocket or wallet or from a purse and then switch that so with the help of wearables so if i have my wearables with me connected to my smartphone so i just uh, take that uh, wearable near to my car and it automatically unlock that car so this feature is currently with this tata nexon so tata nexon provides one uh, wearables with that is uh, with this when a uh, wearable you are uh, not only you are able to unlock your car others now uh, wearable as uh, man like you say fitness tracking and all those features they are also there with us so with one uh, 
you know, wearables, you can unlock your car, you have fitness tracking, and in the near future, so in the near future, we'll have a wearable, uh, which is connected to our smartphone, or we can say maybe this technology go forward to app technology or like I say mobile technology and it will you know, work as independent. It will have like features like maybe smart payments or uh, like a key or fitness. It also already has uh, like heart rate mon monitoring, the heart rate and the other things also there. So I think near future, wearables and mobile apps will go further and have more features also there. So thank you for this first slide. Thanks.